get right into uh, redox reactions. So we have oxidation reduction, uh, and then often that is shortened to redox. Okay, uh, and a quick uh, definition for this, this is just an electron transfer from one species to another. Okay, uh, so um, if, if you see uh, uh, reactions where you see an electron transfer, uh, chances are it's a, it's a redox uh, reaction. Now, you can see on I wrote here oxidation reduction, and that is because these things usually go, not always, they always go in pairs. They must go in pairs. Uh, you cannot have oxidation without uh, a reduction. So you always have two reactions um, going in tandem, going simultaneously, and so uh, these go in pairs. All right, so what we will do now, uh, I will give you an example of a redox reaction, and we will try to balance it um, uh, using, uh, using some concepts that you already know and some concepts that you, you know, you'll be just introduced to today. Uh, and uh, without further ado, let's, let's, let's start with that. So if I have the following reaction, copper, elemental copper, uh, reacting with silver nitrate, which is aqueous, uh, this will result in copper nitrate, and elemental silver. And what I'd like to do, the overarching theme for uh, the next few minutes would be to try to balance this and to try to understand uh, some of, of the nuance uh, ideas here. Uh, and so, uh, as I'm mentioning, I mentioned this, these going pair. Let's try to see why, why that is. Before we begin, uh, again, let's try to ascribe oxidation numbers to each one of the uh, each one of the elements here don't worry about uh, nitrogen and oxygen just just do NO3 as a whole and then try to do for copper and for silver all right so as we mentioned uh, if it is elemental uh, or neutral compound it will have the oxidation number of zero so both copper and silver here will have zero all right uh, again uh, nitrate um, from the from the polyatomic uh, atom, uh, um, polyatomic compounds that you had committed to memory, uh, NO3 would be negative one, uh, and same here is negative one. Therefore, I have a negative two here for both of them. Uh, that will then mean that silver uh, will be positive one, uh, and copper here will be positive two. Okay, so uh, hopefully a quick review for you, uh, and. Uh, and so that's that's about it. So that's that as you can see right away Copper here goes from zero to positive two meaning it, it, it changed its its oxidation number was was altered uh, And same for silver the oxidation number for silver went from positive one to zero and its Oxidation number was altered as well nitrate did not is negative one here and it's negative one here The reason I wrote negative two is because there's two of them so NO3 is just a spectator here in this reaction uh, and many people uh, would also um, omit that so you can you can certainly write write it like like so for the oxidation um, reduction uh, reactions here you can write it like this okay and you can just omit that and then at the very end you can you can uh, bring it back Okay, so if I'm looking at this type uh, reaction right here, which is what we're going to be focusing on, if I were to ask you uh, if this was balanced or not, you might you might be tempted to say, well, yeah, I have one copper here, one copper here, one silver here, one silver here. Yeah, it looks balanced, but it isn't, so it's misleading. Uh, and just a quick look here with the nitrates, you can see that it is not, because the nitrates are not balanced. So we're going to try to balance this, all right? Uh, and what I'm going to introduce to you right now uh, is the idea of half reactions. So if I have this as the overall reaction here, what I propose is that I can break this up into the two pairs that um, two pairs of reactions that constitute this. Okay, 
I have copper doing something and I have silver doing another thing. So I can break this up. So I can say uh, I have two half reactions that together constitute the entire reaction. And it will be as so. Copper, solid, uh, will go to uh, copper plus two, and this is aqueous. Okay. Uh, and I have silver, aqueous. Uh, it is also going into elemental silver here. All right. And uh, let me get rid of this. Okay. So that's, that's where we are at the moment. Uh, and um, what I'd like for you to also tell me is another type of review from, from, uh, from chapters ago, uh, is which one of these is the oxidation half reaction and which one of these is the reduction half reaction. Okay, so take a moment to try to tell me this or figure this out. Uh, okay, as a reminder, Leo the lion says grr. If you, if you forget, um, you know, sometimes I even, think, I even use that too. It's not like a, uh, uh, you don't have to necessarily remember this if you don't deal with this uh, on, you know, on a daily basis. Electric chemists, uh, uh, people that do uh, uh, cell batteries and things like that, they, have, they, they know this, this is second nature to them. But people that don't deal with this on a daily -day basis, they use this mnemonic, uh, you know, with no shame. So, loss of electron is oxidation, so meaning that uh, something that lost electrons became more positive. So, copper here became positive, meaning it lost electrons. So, this will be my oxidation. And gain of electrons is reduction. I know it's an unfortunate thing, gaining is reducing. Uh, so, gain of electrons is uh, reduction, and that, that will be it here. So. Uh, one more thing I'd like, I'd like you to do is try to assign electrons to each one of these half, half reactions to try to balance the charges. It's not, just, it's not important to just balance the masses, but also the charges. So if you look here, the ch overall charge on the reactant side for the copper is zero, and here it's positive two. Uh, here it's positive one, and here it's zero. So what I'd like to do is try to introduce electrons to try to, to balance it out. Because electrons have negligible mass, it's not like I'm doing anything, and then eventually I'm going to cancel them out anyway. It's for bookkeeping purposes. So if I'm looking here, I want to have two electrons being added to this side. And two negatives and two positives will cancel it out. If I'm looking here, I want to have one electron here. To, to balance uh, to balance the positive one, and so these these two will be my two and a half reactions with the electrons ascribed to each one of them. All right, great. Now to complete the balance, uh, I'm not I'm not done yet completely. Uh, as as we said, these are half reactions. I get to add them up to get the whole. Uh, before I can add them up, I just I just mentioned to you that these electrons are for bookkeeping purposes. Uh, they're not actual species, I can't have them in the total uh, net reactions at the very end. So if I were to add this right now, it would look as though they're there. So I shouldn't. So what do I need to do to try to, to get rid of these electrons when I add them up? Right, so it would be to multiply this through by two. So if I were to multiply this through by two, I would have two electrons, two silvers here uh, as such, and then I can add these two reactions together uh, and then you can see right here, the electrons on the left side will cancel the electrons on the right side, uh, just like a, a mathematical equation. And I can add this up and get the, uh, the full net reaction that I need. And I can add back the nitrate or whatever spectator ion I want uh, at the end of it if I want to. And so this should be my reaction at the end. Okay, and so as you can see here, uh, I have two silvers and I have one copper. This was fairly simple. It only took forever because I, I was holding a hand uh, going through this, but it should take you a few seconds to get to here from the original uh, uh, reaction. Okay, uh, and so if this, uh, under 
Under neutral solutions, neutral conditions, uh, this is the methodology by which you would go about balancing reactions, the redox reactions. Fairly simple. But it gets a little bit, just a hair, more complicated if you uh, have these redox reactions occur uh, in basic environments or in acidic environments, which uh, many batteries, you know, al alkaline batteries, are in a basic environment. Uh, so a more realistic scenario would be uh, for, for, for electrochemical purposes, uh, for thermodynamic purposes, for engineering purposes, would be to, uh, to discuss this in uh, non-neutral environments. So I'm going to give you some sort of like a, a, a recipe, a step-by-step -step guide to balancing redox reactions, and then we'll go through an example to really showcase what's happening, because so, it looks a little bit daunting after we look at that. So uh, let's, let's do that. Let's do balancing redox. So, balancing redox reactions. Alright. As I said, I'm going to give you like a little bit of a recipe. Uh, and so, first thing first, what you're going to do is using oxidation numbers. Uh, so, you want to ascribe the oxidation numbers to, uh, to the different species. Uh, separate the reaction that's given to you uh, into two half reactions. Okay, so that's the first thing you want to do, right? Uh, afterwards, uh, you want to balance all the atoms. Except oxygen and hydrogen. So we, just, we didn't encounter oxygen and hydrogen in the previous example, but we will now. Uh, so if you have neutral solutions, you can go ahead and skip to step three. Okay? If you have uh, non-neutral solutions, so if whether it's acidic or basic, doesn't really matter, uh, you need to, to do uh, the, the, two, the following two things. One, for every oxygen that appears in the uh, in in the rea in the half reaction, to the opposite side, you want to add uh, waters H two O to balance that oxygen. So um, add enough H two O molecules uh, to uh, balance any oxygens um, in the reaction. Uh, and this has to be done to the opposite side. Okay? If I put the put on the same side, then I would just add uh, the same, I would, I would just double my oxygens. So I'm trying to balance the oxygen, so I would have to put it on the other side. Okay? Now I introduce a whole bunch of hydrogens, and I may have other hydrogens anyway in the reaction. To balance hydrogens to the opposite side from where they appear, add enough H plus um, to, to do that. So add enough. H plus to the opposite side to, uh, to balance uh, hydrogen. Okay. So we didn't do this. I promise we'll do this in a, in a, minute, in a few minutes. So uh, after you do this, uh, you go to the next step, which is to ascribe the, the uh, number of electrons to each, uh, to each half reaction. So ascribe the appropriate Uh, number of electrons to each half reaction. And we just did that, so you, you saw what that's like. Okay? Uh, then what you're going to do is adjust the coefficients. Again, we just did this. Adjust coefficients of each, uh, for each of the uh, uh, constituents in the reactions uh, so that the number of electrons in the reduction half reaction is equal to the number of electrons in the oxidation half reaction. Okay, as, and that's just, again, we just saw that. I don't want to have oxygens in my net reaction at the very end. I want to make sure that both half reactions have the same number of electrons so they cancel out. That's what this does. All right. Uh, then after we do that, 
add the two half reactions together, okay, uh, and after you add them up, uh, simplify if you need to. So, you know, if, they all, if it ends up that they all have, I don't know, if it's the coefficients are 4, 2, 2, 2, you can divide through by 2, something like that. Uh, or uh, if you have something that's a little bit messy, uh, you know, with ions that can get easily combined, we will do that. We'll look at an example to show you. So, um, if uh, this is true for um, acidic and for neutral, if you have a basic solution, I'm going to add one more step. You don't need to do this uh, for acidic solutions or for neutral solutions. Uh, you only got to do that for basic media only. Uh, and so what you do here is uh, add enough hydroxide ions to both sides of the equation to offset H plus. Okay. Uh, so add enough hydroxides to both sides of the equation to both sides to offset H plus. Now, after I offset the H plus and I have uh, the OHs there, uh, uh, I want to clean it up a little bit. So if I have H plus and OH minus, sorry, on the same side, I can combine them to water, things like that. Uh, and then I also want to simplify. So um, now I know this is reductionless. So let's go through an example and it will be a little bit more apparent. Uh, this looks pretty daunting. Uh, it's because I'm, I'm, I'm slowly explaining things. And that's usually what it is. You know, you've, you've seen this in the past when I explain something that looks dense, but when we're actually doing it practically, it doesn't take as long and it becomes pretty apparent what I mean. Okay? And after we do an example, when you look back at this recipe, uh, it will make sense. You'll remember the example pretty well, hopefully, uh, or the steps that we did in class, and you'll be able to apply it for yourselves. Uh, so that's, that's my goal, at least. So let me get rid of this. And we'll go through an example. Okay, we'll go through a disproportionation reaction. So, uh, in this example, uh, and it will be a basic media uh, example. I will have uh, bromine. So, elemental bromine disproportionates. Uh, into uh, bromate and bromide. Uh, okay, in basic environment. Okay, in the, in, the, in the basic environment, and I want you to balance this. Okay, so let's write out the reaction or what we're using. Uh, and so I have elemental bromine, which is a liquid. Uh, this will uh, disproportionate itself into uh, bromide, the aqueous, and bromate, like this. Okay. All right. So, uh, so we have the reaction, and now let's go through step by step what we do for each one of the um, each one of the steps that we uh, to get to the balanced net reaction. All right. So first thing uh, is we want to ascribe the, uh, the oxidation numbers here because we're going to have to split this up into two half reactions. And so we need to understand what, which one is the oxidation, which one is the reduction. So this is elemental, so it'll have a charge of, uh, an oxidation number of zero. This one is an ion, so it will have the same as the ion itself, so it'll be negative one. This entire guy here um, it will, be, will be negative one because it's, it's negative from the uh, negative charge for the ion. Oxygen, well, mind you, is negative two, and so three oxygens will be negative six, so this whole thing is negative six. This side, the bromine, has to add to the negative six to get negative one, and so it would have to be positive five. So that would work. Okay. Now I'm ready to break this into two half reactions. And I'm, I chose this, I'm, I, I, try to, I like to choose the most esoteric type examples because um, if I give you a simple example and you see something a little more complicated later, it may daunt you. So here I only have one reactant. So it's a little bit esoteric. And what I mean by that, this bromine here 
does both. It gets oxidized and it gets reduced. So uh, it's it, disproportionately. And so uh, I will have an oxidation half reaction that has this and a, a reduction that has this. So um, to, to look at this, I have bromine. Be a two. I'm going to drop these for uh, uh, the, uh, the, the states uh, just for brevity here. Bromine will go into bromate. And also bromine will go into bromide. Okay, so I have these two half reactions. Uh, so, uh, which one is the reduction and which one is the oxidation? What do you think? Okay, so uh, again, uh, this here will be the reduction. I went from zero to negative one. And this will be oxidation. I went from zero to positive five. Okay, so, uh, um, so that's how that would work. So now, what I gotta do now is try to balance this. If for first thing, first things first, uh, the, I am going to balance the uh, elements that are not oxygen or hydrogen. I have oxygen here, so I'm going to ignore it for now. And I'm going to use bromine only. So I have two bromines here. I have one bromine here, so I'll put two. I have two bromines here, one bromine here, I'll put two. That's the first step. I'm going to do that. All right, great. Now, I need to uh, balance my oxygen. And we mentioned that we use water to balance ox oxygen. If I were to put water again on the same side as the oxygen, I'm just doubling the number of oxygens I have. So that doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to put oxygen on the opposite side. So I'm going to put water on the, on the reactant side of this, um, of this reaction. And since I have six oxygens, I'm going to put six waters this way. Six H2O. All right, and uh, for, for here, I don't have to do anything, okay? I don't have any oxygens. Great. Next step would be to balance the hydrogens. I don't have any hydrogens here. Again, I'm going to ignore this. This here, I have 12 hydrogens on the left side, so I got to add enough H plus to offset any H's that I have in the reaction. So I'm going to, again, add that to the other side to make sure that I have the same number of hydrogens on each side. So I will add 12 H plus to the other side. So now my oxygens are balanced, my oxygens are balanced, my bromines are balanced. So uh, both reactions are happy from, from an elemental perspective. Uh, next thing now, so this, is, um, so this was the step two that we didn't do before. Now step three is to uh, try to put enough uh, electrons to each of these to make sure that, uh, uh, that the charges on each side uh, are equal. So here, let's look here. Uh, I'll use red again. I have two negative here, negative two on this side, and I have zero here. That must mean that I need to have two electrons on this side to balance this. So I have negative two here, I have negative two here, that's good. Here, Uh, this here is neutral. Here I have negative 2. Here I have positive 12. So I have a total of positive 10. So I need 10 extra electrons as such. So now I have the charges also balanced. Okay. The next step now is to try to add it up, but I can't add it up because uh, I have two electrons here and I have 10 electrons here. And if I added it up I, in my net reaction, I would have uh, eight electrons on the right side. I don't want that. I want to get rid of all the electrons. So to do that, I need to modify the coefficients here uh, to make sure that I have 10 electrons. So that's pretty simple. I'm just going to multiply everything through by 5. Um, and if I do that, if I multiply by 5, I get 10 here, I get 5 here, and I get 10 here again. Okay. Now I'm ready to add it up because when I add this up, uh, lo and behold, the electrons would go away when I add this up. So let's try to add this up. When I add this up, the electrons go away. I have 6 H2O right here. I have bromine and bromine again. I have 1 and 5, so together I'll have 6 bromines. Okay. 
uh, and then this will go into uh, two bromate, okay, ten bromide, uh, and I have twelve H plus. Uh, and so this this is almost almost done, but this is this is pretty much the balanced reaction. Uh, the last modification is to simplify this, uh, and so I have uh, an excess factor of 2, so I can divide through by 2, as you can see, to simplify this. And so I'll do that, so I'll divide all of this by 2, and so 6 becomes 3, uh, and 2 becomes 1, 10 becomes 5, and 12 becomes 6. And so this is my balanced reaction as it stands, okay? Now, I mentioned right here that this is uh, occurring in a basic environment. If I were to tell you that this thing occurs in an acidic environment, you'd be done. That's it. Okay, that'd be the end of the problem. That'd be the end, the end of the, the balancing act. You'd be done. For a basic environment, I, I mentioned as a, a slight uh, complication. So let's let's go through that and see what happens. So I, I mentioned that for each uh, incidence of, uh, of of hydrogen of H plus, every time I see an H plus, I want to offset that with an OH minus, with hydroxide, okay? So, don't look at the H2O here, the H doesn't matter here, I'm looking at specifically charged hydrogens. So, I have six H pluses here, so what I'll need to do for basic, uh, the, for the basic modification, is to add six hydroxides to offset this charge, okay? Now, I, I just introduced oxygens and hydrogens on this side, I want to do the same thing on the other side because um, I want to make sure it's uh, sorry six OH minus here on this side. Okay, uh, I want to make sure that.